everybody. How are y'all doing today? Oh, man, that was pretty wild last week, all those promises, huh? Yeah, okay. This week, we're doing review lessons, okay? We're going to review the last... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, five lessons. Okay. I bet you thought I was really going there, didn't you? All right. When we first started out this group of lessons, we had the Israelites, they were in Babylon. You remember that? Okay. We had one group that had come back home already, and we had... Um, and, and, and right before we started this group, we had Esther, who got crowned as the princess of, uh, of, of Persia, right? No, Mr. Charlie. No. She was not crowned the princess. She was crowned the queen, right? Yeah. Okay. If we have time, we'll come back to that. Okay, but then we had the second group of Israelites that came back from Babylon, and we found out that Ezra, who has a book in the Bible, right, he led that group back, and then we found out that there was a third group led by Nehemiah, who also had a, a, a book in the Bible, okay? What, what, what was Ezra, what was his specialty? What was he really good at? Do you remember? Yeah. He knew the law. He knew how to read the law. And he had a good relationship with God, right? Okay. What did Nehemiah do? What, what, was, his, what was his specialty? What, what was his job in Babylon? Do you remember? No, he wasn't a lawyer. Yeah, he was the cupbearer. Remember what that means? Yeah, basically he's the food tester. Okay, to see if it's poison. Yeah, exactly. Alright, so you got Ezra and then Nehemiah, and we talked about Malachi. We'll get to Malachi in a second, okay? So Ezra, we talked about Ezra. When, when he came back, he saw something. What did he see? What, 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 what was going on with the Israelites when he came back? Were they worshiping God? Not really, no. Why do you think they weren't worshiping God? Because they didn't have anybody to teach them, right? Because most of these people who came back, they were born in Babylon. Not, not all of them, but most of them were born in Babylon. Did they get a whole lot of, this is how to be a good Hebrew? This is how to be a good Israelite? Did they get that training in, in, in Babylon? Nope, they didn't. Because what were they doing in Babylon? They were in exile, right? They were kind of sort of slaves. Okay? So they came back, Ezra came back, and he saw that people weren't worshiping God. Really, at all. So Ezra said, okay, we got to fix this. So he taught, he started teaching people how to worship God. And then Nehemiah is brother or cousin. Now I'm drawing a blank. Well, he was his brother. You know what? I need to go look at that. Let's go look at that. Nehemiah chapter 1. Okay. Don't know why I had that brain fart, but I did. Okay. Hannah and I, one of my brothers. It was his brother. Okay. Alright. Cool. I was right. Okay. So Nehemiah's brother had actually come back as part of this group. Right? That's the cool thing about the Bible, because when you're not sure about something, you can always go look it up, right? Exactly. Okay. So his brother came back with this group, and his brother said, you know what? The, the people are there, and they're living day in and day out, but the city is still torn all up. It's still in ruins. They don't even have a wall around 
the city to protect the city. And looters come in and take all their stuff and, you know, and what? Everybody, everybody's all kind of down and out and all that stuff. So Nehemiah says, you know what? This is not good. And it, and it made him real upset. So he prayed, you remember? And what was his job again? He was the cup bearer, yep, the, the food tester to say, okay, is it poison or not? So one day he's, a, he's serving the king and the king notices what? Notices his face. He says, Nehemiah, you look sad today. What's going on? Now, was the king really concerned about Nehemiah? Or was the king concerned about Nehemiah might be sick and Nehemiah might be sick, so therefore the food might be bad? Yeah, okay? The food might be bad. That's what the king was worried about. Nehemiah said, the city where I was born, my city, my hometown is in ruins, and I'm here and I can't do anything about it. So what did the king do? The king said, what can I do for you? Nehemiah is like, what? Did he just ask? Did, 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 did he just offer to help? You remember that? We talked about that. Nehemiah said, I want to go back. The king said, how long is it going to take? Nehemiah gave him a time. The king said, here you go. Oh, by the way, here's letters to all the countries on the, on the way to let you pass through safely. Make sure you pass through safely. Not just let you. You know, because you might get eaten by lions or whatever. No, 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 no. They're supposed to make sure that Nehemiah and his group get through their country safely. And once they're there, here's letters directing them to give you what you need. Okay, so Nehemiah got back to Jerusalem, and what did they do? Did they slack off? Nope. Nehemiah didn't let them slack off. You remember that? And then uh, there, there were these guys who, who they didn't want the, the wall to be rebuilt, so what were they doing? They were picking on them, laughing at them. Yeah, yeah. And so what, what did Nehemiah do? Nehemiah told them to get lost. Did that make them go away? Nope. They started attacking, and they started... Trying to, trying to fight with the people to keep them from rebuilding the wall. What did Nehemiah do? Nehemiah said, all right, fine, we're going to double up. One guy's here with his sword. The guy in front of him, he's protecting the guy in front of him who's, who's putting rocks on the wall. Remember that? Yeah, okay. So then after they got the wall rebuilt, what did they do? They had a celebration. Nehemiah actually had Ezra get up and read the Bible. Remember that? Talked about that. And what did the people do? What, what, what did the people say? Did the people go, oh, that's why we're doing that. Oh, that's why we're doing that. We're, we're doing it good, right? No. No, no, no. Ezra got up and he read the law of Moses. He read all the, the, the books that Moses wrote about how to worship God the right way. And the people were like, oh, we got this all wrong. We got this all wrong. And so what did they do? They fixed it. Remember we talked about how you, when you repent, you start going one way. Now wait a minute, that's not the way I need to go. So you turn around and start going back the other way. And you say, God, thank you for, for giving me a chance to fix that, to, to turn that around. Now please forgive me. Right? Okay, we talked about that. And then we skip forward about a hundred years or so. All these people who found out that they were not worshiping God the right way, they taught their children how to do it, and they taught their children, and they taught their children, and everybody was doing it right, right? No. They weren't. The next guy who came in, and, uh, the next prophet who came in and started talking for God, what was his name? Malachi, right? It looks like Malachi. Yeah, but uh, it's Malachi. And you know what? 
Some people like to joke in calling the Italian prophet. Okay? Alright, now here's, here's what's special about Malachi. Malachi, his, his writings are the last book in the Old Testament. That's the last stuff. That's the last words, the last information that came from God before it was time for Jesus to come. Okay? Remember that? We talked about that last week. Or actually, yeah, a uh, week before last, a little bit, and more last week. Okay? But Malachi started out with what? Wait a minute, Mr. Charlie. They talked about Nehemiah and Ezra taught them how to worship God, and then Malachi comes in, and what did Malachi say? Malachi said, you're still not doing it right. You guys have got it all wrong. And you're teaching my people wrong. Because Malachi was talking to the priest. Remember that? Okay, he said, you're, preaching, you're, you're teaching my people wrong. Who is he talking for? Is it Malachi's people? No, it's God's people. Okay. So God is talking through Malachi. After, after God kind of yelled at him a lot, talked about this. When God yells at you or, 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 or punishes you for something, what does He do right after that? He gives you hope, right? He says, I still love you. I'm still in control. I'm still taking care of you. And then last week we talked about two promises. Okay? I'm going to back up a second, just for a minute. When God makes a promise, do we have to worry about it? Do we have to say, oh man, I really hope God's going to keep His promise. Do we have to worry about that? No. Now here's, here's what I'm going to go back to. Remember back when we were talking about Abraham? How many promises did God make to Abraham? Three. That's right. You all remember what they were? That's a star. Yep. Yeah. What's the star have to do with Abraham? Children. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. God promised Abraham you're going to have as many children as there are stars in the sky. Count them, Abraham, if you can. You remember that? We, we read that verse. Okay. And then, what was the second thing that God promised to Abraham? Those people, all of those people that are your offspring... They're going to need a place to live, right? They're going to need a, place, a, a, a country. They're going to need space. So I'm going, to, I'm going to make sure I give them a country. Okay? And then the third promise was, through one of those offspring, I'm going to bless the world. Remember we talked about that? And we, we talked about who that was? Who that offspring was going to be? That's right, it's Jesus. Okay? All right? Now then we look at Malachi. We talked about Malachi's promises last week. What were his two promises? I said one of them has been fulfilled already. One of them is still to come. You remember that? Okay. The one that's been fulfilled already. Messenger. Yeah, exactly. That's the messenger. And who's the messenger? Oh, I got a, I got a, I got a Bible book if you remember this. I got a Bible book if you remember this. What was his name? What was his name? What was his name? Remember, we talked about his dad wrote it down on a sheet of paper. His name is John. Yes. Good job. Okay. All right. John, uh, Malachi said, God's going to send a messenger. God's talking through Malachi, and God said, I'm going to send a messenger who's going to prepare my way. Right? You remember that? Okay. And then we went over to the book of Luke, and we read how... When, when John the Baptist's dad was doing the incense thing, and the angel said, your wife's going to gonna, gonna, uh, bear you a son, and he is going to prepare the way for me. Remember that? Okay. All right. And what was the second promise? You remember it has, it has to do with the guy that did the fire on the mountain? What was his name? Elijah. Yeah, and, and how did Elijah, how did Elijah not die? The chariot of fire. Yep, good job. You guys are on it. I'm so impressed. 
What did he say about Elijah? What, what did Malachi say about Elijah? He said, before I come back in all of my glory, I'm going to send Elijah to you. So, that will be a sign that you can, that you can pay attention to. Okay? So, we've covered a whole lot of history within these last few weeks. Okay? We've got the Israelites back from Babylon, and we're ready for Jesus to be born. We'll just have to wait a little while. You remember how, many, how long that little while was? Do you remember how many years were in there? No, not 40. 400. That's right. 400 years with nothing from God. It's called, actually, they call it the 400 silent years. Okay? We're going to start our next book next week. And you know what that means? You know, you know what, what starts with the next book?